Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at this 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Zooms. I've seen this company mentioned a few times in the comments of other videos I've published, uh, so I went out and purchased one on Amazon. I paid $320 for this battery, which comes out to $250 per kilowatt hour. Um, I did notice right away that this battery looks near identical to the EnjoyBot battery that I just reviewed a couple of days ago. Um, so I'm hoping it's just the same case and not the exact same battery. Otherwise, this is not going to make for a very fun video, but we're going to do it anyway. So we really don't have much on the front of the enclosure. There's no specifications or anything, just the brand name. 12.8 volts is a nominal voltage and the capacity of 100 amp hours. Taking a look at the top, it looks exactly the same as the EnjoyBot. We have the nylon strap, we have the same terminal covers, we have the same bolts, and we have the same bolt covers. The only real difference is in the upper left hand corner we have what appears to be a serial number specific for this manufacturer. And here I have the two batteries side by side so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The cases are identical in every aspect except for color. So taking a look at the terminal, it's the same uh, epoxied stud type with an M8 size bolt and a plastic cover for added safety. Alright, so taking a look at the specifications for this battery. The recommended charge current is 20 amps, but it has a maximum charge current of 100 amps and a maximum discharge of 100 amps. Additionally, it has a maximum pulse discharge of 280 amps for up to 5 seconds. And this is indicating the cycle life of 4,000 or more times. I may or may not have a comment to add on this later. And it also has an IP65 water resistance rating. So I've got the charger turned up to max current. And we're charging at 81.3 amps. All right, so I've got my standard test setup connected here. We're using a Batrium shunt, which is part of the Watchmon 5 BMS. We have a fuse for safety, and we have an Android display showing the current voltage, amperage, wattage, amp hours, and watt hours of the battery. And like usual for the load, I just have a 2000 watt inverter connected to a few incandescent light bulbs. And our goal is to stay around 20 amps or a 0.2 C rate. All right, so we'll be back when this shuts off and we'll see what our final capacity is. 102.9 amp hours. So we began our test at 14.0 volts and concluded at 9.88 volts. That 9.88 volts is the point at which the BMS and the battery disconnected. The average discharge current throughout the test was 23.4 amps and the test took 262 minutes. This enclosure is sealed the whole way around. There are no screws or anything, so unfortunately we are going to have to pry it apart with the putty knife once again, which means it probably won't go back together. I'll tell you what, this thing may look like the EnjoyBot battery, but this thing is a heck of a lot more difficult to open. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, this looks very different inside, so I'm, I'm glad to see that actually. I was afraid it was going to be an exact copy of what I had just reviewed a couple of days ago, so. All right, this battery pack is comprised of four GFB brand 100 amp hour cells. These are the same exact cells that are used in the SOK batteries. These cells are laser welded together at the series connections, and they're done using pure aluminum strip. The main positive is a 6 gauge silicone insulated wire with a 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating, pretty standard. The negative is comprised of three 10 gauge silicone insulated wires. And the main positive and negative are bolted down to the battery, they are not laser welded. We can see each of the balance leads coming up for the series connections of the cells here. They are fixed down nicely in the center of the battery, they're not floating around loose, bumping against other terminals or anything like that. And looking at the way these balance leads are secured here, each one is terminated with a crimped down ring terminal with a piece of heat shrink covering the exposed area. They are held down to the bus bar using a screw, a lock washer, and a flat washer. Taking a look at the battery assembly, there's a piece of plastic covering both ends of the battery pack, and they are held together with these plastic straps. Again, as we've seen before, they are simply fixed in place from expansion. They are not compressed. I don't see any signs of cell bloating, any expansion, or anything like that. They appear to be pristine cells. And I see they are kept separate here with these plastic tabs in between each of the cells. And I do see there is a piece of plastic going down between each cell for extra isolation. Taking a look at the main positive connection here, this lug is crimped on very well. It looks like it was crimped properly. However, one thing I noticed here is that... Uh, they have the balance lead on the terminal first, and then they have the power lead on top of it. That is wrong. That's not the way you're supposed to connect this. You're supposed to put this power lead down first, and then you put the balance lead. 
So if you're discharging this battery at 100 amps, that's a point of weakness, in my opinion. And it looks like the negative is done the same way, unfortunately. For the balance lead on first, and then we have the power wire. That is wrong. All right, so taking a look at this BMS, I can't really tell what type it is. It's not something I recognize. Part of the label actually pulled off due to having foam on the top, but I can see it does have a rating of 100 amps, which matches the rating of the battery, so that's good. Down here in the bottom left, we can see the balance lead connector, and we have a temperature sensor. And once again, this does not appear to be an actual temperature sensor or a thermistor. It appears to be a thermal switch. So this is the same exact thermal switch we just saw in the EnjoyBot battery. Um, this will trip at 75 degrees Celsius, so this battery likely does not have low temperature charging protection, unfortunately. Alright, so I've got my iCharger X6. Positive is connected to the main positive, and I've got the negative on the BMS negative over here. It's charging at 5 amps. Going to dip this sensor in a glass of frozen salt water. I know it's not going to work, but we're going to test it anyway. And as you can see, the battery is still charging. It is not shutting down. But the sensor should trip at 75 degrees Celsius, so we're going to verify that with a heat gun here. And there we go, the eye charger says output connection broken. Alright, so on the bottom of the BMS, I removed four Phillips screws on the left side and two Phillips screws on the right side. Be able to pull this cover off now. Okay. Now the reason why I'm doing this really is somebody had commented on my last video and asked how I don't know there are more sensors in the BMS itself. And that is a great, very valid response. And it's very important to make sure we're getting this information right. So upon taking apart the BMS here, you see there is another temperature sensor situated down within the MOSFET transistors here. This is also a thermal switch exactly like the other one, except this one is rated for 105 degrees Celsius instead of 75 degrees Celsius. So really they have no actual temperature sensors on this board itself. There is no way for this board to measure temperature. They have these two thermal switches, but these are not temperature sensors. Additionally, I've carefully looked over all of these components here, and I see nothing else here that looks even remotely close to being a temperature sensor or a port for an additional temperature sensor. But yeah, otherwise the BMS looks fairly standard. I certainly wouldn't classify it as top quality. I've seen some that are much better, uh, but I also wouldn't call it poor quality either. So there we go, another review. Unfortunately, another battery without low temperature charging protection. Uh, but once again, I don't consider that a deal breaker in my opinion. It's just very important for somebody purchasing these batteries to know whether or not that functionality exists. Additionally, we did find what I consider to be a second problem with this battery, that uh, the balancing lead was underneath the power ring terminal on the main positive and negative battery connections. It is unfortunate because these are some very, very good cells that are included in this battery pack. Um, I did mention earlier in the video about the cycle count, and that's because I was afraid this battery was going to be identical to the EnjoyBot battery that I just reviewed a couple of days ago. And that battery was rated for around 4,000 cycles as well. However, after making that video, I later found out that the EnjoyBot battery used Goshen 102 amp hour cells. And if they are the cells, I think they are. And I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty certain at this point. They are only rated for 1,500 cycles before they reach 70% state of health. That is not the case with these cells. These GFB cells are very, very good cells. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Um, I try to be as thorough as possible in these videos, but it always seems there's a detail or two I miss. Other than that, hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.